ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Sam's Workshop. As you can see, we got Austin! Back again. Not car, not car, this is Austin G. Yeah, different one. But y'all know that now, so we're, we're, that's the last one mention of it. Welcome back, Austin. Glad to have you here. Glad to be back. So today, we're going to get to working on the Corvette. We're going to start looking and seeing where we can find all those nice little vacuum leaks are. That's going to that's gonna take a little bit. A lot of tagging, a lot of finding. But we got our little tool from Ansel, that mm -hmm. little leak test, the uh, leak detector. So we'll be using that. There'll be a link for it down below. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a neat little tool. That, we're we're going to have fun with that. Oh, yeah. Very handy. Um, I did ask Austin to do something for me. And I'm going to be eagerly waiting in anticipation for the outcome. But you know my dash that you saw me do, I told you I was gonna put a GMC emblem over in the side. I have asked Austin to do that for me because he is such a craftsman himself, I want a piece from him to go in that car. So, the challenge is on, dude. Challenge accepted. Sweet, okay. Well, let's get to work. All right, Austin. This area right in here is where all of our vacuum lines going to these lots are. Now I have run the leak detector, leak detector test on it. I want to get some side cutters and start getting all this off too. On it. And where will I find your roll of blue tape? Roll of blue tape should be on the table here. Oh, there should be some. How about, how about a uh, yellow tape? Just as good. Okay. Side cutters. Gotta say, that is an amazing tool. Oh, you, you'll think amazing when it starts rolling them out. There you go. Any yeah, other scragglers? Not that I can see yet. All right. We'll keep these here because I feel like we're going to need them. I want to go get my, my strip lamp so we can actually see on up in here. Mm -hmm. oh, it's already coming out right here. Nope. Yep. Step around here and look. Right. I'm seeing a leak right oh. here at the joint. Here. Yep. Now is it coming out of that uh, that box or is it coming out of a hose? Uh, hard to tell here. That is coming out the bottom vent on the box here. Okay. See how it's, if I put my thumb there, or pinky. Kind of disrupts that airflow. Right. Yeah, it's coming out the bottom there. Okay. So, let's hang that guy. Yeah. Look over here. Oh boy. Where's that one blowing from? It is coming it's in coming from the back here with the bung. This one here, same thing. Yep, yep. It's tagged. Yep, it's coming out the bottom of this one too. Are those valves, I'm guessing? Yeah, because see, you got yeah. you got your actuator going here. Down there. So I just need to get, it looks like I just need to get a daggum yeah, rebuild unit. kit. So that one, that one. The hoses are... The hoses are actually good. Surprisingly so. And, and feel of them. They're, yeah, they, they feel good. They feel... Elastic, they're pliable. I, I bet you whoever worked on this thing put new hoses on. Oh man. You gotta get them a shot from in here because gosh dang, it is pouring out. Let me see if we gotta. Okay, we're gonna get you up in here so y'all can see this. We got smoke pouring out of there. We got it coming out of the vents right there and right there. Hoses are all good. 
there is not one drop coming out of a hose. Coming out that and coming out the, yeah, it's just come out from the uh, boot backside there. Yep. See. I'm gonna go in or out. That goes out. I know I can get a complete kit for like a hundred bucks. Woo! There we go. Now that that bellows is expanded out. See right there, there's mm. a pin. Oh, that's a, I can stick my finger in that hole. Yep. Okay. okay. Now what we need to get there now. New bellows joints. Shall we do the same on the other? I, I think, I think we're pretty good to know what we need. Yeah. Yep. 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 I think we found, oh, is that even there? Um, well, there's a problem. <laughs> Ain't got no gas. <laughs> and that's what we just used on this thing. And I've only filled this thing up once with mineral oil. And did you fill it to the max or just yep, partway? Fill it to the max. I've used probably about two thirds of it. Okay. We found out what's going on with the headlights. I've got the correct rebuild kit for the actuators. I've got two new vacuum relays coming. From everything I have seen, that's all these need because when I had this thing first got it running, I would pull the switch, they would come up and then go back down. It was like there was a little bit getting through, but not quite enough. So I think that we know what to do up here now. Get those replaced if it still don't work, we know it's somewhere up in the dash. This front here will be done. I'll be able to get the radiator, the AC condenser, all that stuff in and not have to worry about getting into this area again. So that's on the way. So we moved on to the wiring harness. And Austin, how many times in the years that you've known me, I said, if you're gonna do a job, you do it right or you don't do it at all. I don't know about the don't do it at all, but I've definitely heard the uh, do it right. Yeah. Whoever did this job on this wiring did not do it right. And, you know, I've got to applaud them for their tenacity. But I want you to look at this. Have you ever seen anybody use a piece of wire for wire ties. Actually I mean, looks like garden wire even. Yeah, I mean, number one, you're using wire on a wire. If that insulation breaks, you got problems. Whole and, thing comes alive. I mean, and, and look at this. That is, if you're gonna put a wire on there, you shorten it down, you make it work, it's, it's amazing to me that this thing has not caught fire. So I'm well, going to go through. That said, some of these wires here are very, very crispy. Yeah, they're crispy. Uh, and there's a brown one up here I saw a while ago. Where did it go? It was uh, the you insulation on it. Is? That I'm not sure. I am not sure what that is. I mean, it's a resistor of some sort, and it goes to something. Well, it's an aftermarket thing for sure. Yeah. It's got a 20 amp fuse. So I get to go through all this and figure out what it all does. If somebody knows what this is, uh, leave a comment. Yeah. Well, I know what it is. I just don't know what it does. Yes, if somebody knows what it does, that's what I should have said. <laughs> If That'll the person who worked on this car and put that on happens to see this, please, I promise not to insult you and call you stupid names, but let me know what this is and why it's on here. But we're going to sit here and go through this and see if we can figure something out. And we're also going to try and get our AC box back together. So we are going to put you on a time lapse and see what we can get done.
Okay, everybody, this is where we are at. A lot of this wiring, i.e. <laughs> this one, there's another one there. This has all been added on for some reason or another. So what we're going to do, we are going to find where they go. We're going to make them the way they should be. We have found splices in the wires. Where's that one splice over here, Austin? That, let's see, we got uh, this one here, that one there. We got this one here. This is the oil pressure. I think this is the oil pressure, if not the uh, sen uh, temperature sensor. But uh, I want you to look at this. Splice, splice, splice. People, do me a favor. Look up how to solder before you solder. That is... <laughs> uh. But overall, the wires are in decent condition. Very much so. It's just we have to repair what other people have yeah, screwed up. Now there are a couple that are a little on the crunchy side. That's right. and we're fairly going, easy to replace on this end. We're going to replace them. That that right there is a whole ground wire system. Yeah. And one thing oh, I have found I out. Uh, I know what this nightmare was. Yes, that was the uh, that was our uh, automatic choke or electric choke on the carburetor. So we're going to find where the electric choke wire went and get that replaced but we're going to head over there to the uh, studio get on the computer we're going to find diagrams for the wiring diagrams for the vacuum lines and i want this thing to be right before we put it back on the road i'm getting tired of people doing half a jobs on stuff i mean it's hard to find a good proper repair anymore it is, and the thing about it is, why? Why? Laziness, time. Laziness, uh, but the thing about it is, if you take the time to do it right... You won't have to do it again. Exactly. Mm -hmm. My Voltec teacher, J.C. Dew, God rest him, he said something to me that has always stuck with me through the years. You never have time to do it right the first time, but you always have to make time to do it over. So let's not do this one over. Let's let's get this fixed and get it fixed right. So when this car goes to its new person, all they're gonna to have to fix is, you know, a little bit of body work, little little bit of suspension, you know, things that, you know, aren't gonna break the bank. But, you know, my gosh, this car is just, it, it's a beautiful car. Really is. Why? Why did they do what they did? I just don't understand. But we'll get it fixed. Austin, you're going to get out of here. Yep. And got more things to fix back at the homestead. That's true. We're going to get over to the studio and look things up on the computer for a little bit. Before I end this video, I'm going to get this AC box back together. Start figuring out all my AC lines and connections. Get all that done. So when we get the wiring done, I can put it in. <laughs> so, Austin, we'll see you here in a little bit, bud. See you later.
Okay. Need to check and see if this fan's going to work now. Sounds like it works to me, doesn't it to you? Works for me. All right, everybody. It looks like I got our unit back together. I've got to go get the uh, fan resistor, get a new one of them. That looks a whole lot better than that gunk that they had on there. Really won't know where to set this until I get it inside. There's a bracket that went here, but it hangs way down here. I might be able to get it to hook on there. If I do, I won't have to clean it up and put it on. But uh, I'll do that right before we put it in the car. But this is going to be a whole lot better setup than, uh, than what that other one was. But, next video we'll be sticking that in. And if y'all remember, I, uh, me and Austin found out earlier this video exactly where our headlights are leaking from. And he came to find out the actual actuator is still good. We can open it up, pull the line off, hold my finger over it. Austin can't push the headlight down, so the actual baffle inside it is still good. So we need the, there's a uh, two boots that go on the other side that have to be replaced because it's just, it just leaks uh, vacuum out through there if you ain't got them. And then we've got two relays showing, you know, which switches it from up and down. Well, Tuesday, when Austin was here and we was going through that, I ordered them. Look what I got in the mail today. One new relay, two new relays, and all the boots and rings. Everything. 139 bucks for all of it from a place called Midwest Corvette. Let's see if I can pull this up here. Yeah. Midwest Corvette, Indianapolis. Guys, ordered it Tuesday. It arrived here Thursday. Less than 48 hours. I would say that's customer service. They used USPS, which, in my opinion, right now is better than FedEx or UPS because they actually get things to where it's going most of the time. And... I, I was thoroughly impressed. I was thoroughly, truly impressed. So Midwest Corvette, not sponsored. Thank you guys for getting some parts out and getting them to me. I will be ordering for you again for this thing if I need it. So that being said, I think we're going to end off this video. Um, didn't get a whole lot done, but we got a whole lot more accomplished than what I figured I would on this one. I got my air box back together. It's ready to go back in the car. I need to see if I can find one of the little tubes that hook onto that over to the hose, at least to keep the water and stuff out. We got a game plan on our wiring. I sprayed the inside of that a little bit so I can put that box back in and it look fairly decent. I'm going to spray paint this, but I'm not going to deep clean it because that would take forever to get it done. But I just, I want it to look really good. The paint will stay on. It's just, I'm not doing it the way I need to for it to be perfection. Well, this car is not perfection but it is going to be nice. So, thank y'all for joining me on this, and I guess we will see you next time. Let's see, what are we going to be doing next time? Uh, we may do another C3 and do the uh, rebuild of those light actuators.
Who knows yet? I got enough projects. I got plenty to do. We'll see you next time. Santa's Workshop.